Hey everybody, uh, Herb Kohler, I'm back. Uh, I was dealing with some uh, family stuff over the past couple of weeks, so I've just been uh, not so active on my posts, but I wanted to get back into talking about uh, various topics that I feel have helped me uh, lose a lot of weight and keep it off and feel much better and healthier. And so today I've been meaning to talk more about uh, protein. Uh, in the past couple of uh, videos I did, I talked more about my take on seed oils and what I consider better fats versus uh, worse fats for trying to maintain and control your body weight. But now um, I want to shift to the importance of protein because this is another big uh, component that is uh, really good for our, our overall metabolic health and also our longevity. And I want to talk about the relationship between uh, protein and protein sources and how that relates to building muscle mass and maintaining muscle mass as we get older. So um, why is protein important? Protein is important because we're made out of it. We ingest protein, we extract the amino acids we need to synthesize uh, cells and tissues uh, so that our bodies can function properly. And we, um, as a result, have a, a, a higher metabolic rate and, and uh, more uh, properly functioning uh, systems in our body. So we wanna have enough protein because if we're eating a protein deficient diet, which is very typical um, for the average uh, American diet, then we're going to compromise our metabolic rate, we're going to compromise our longevity, um, and we're going to compromise our fitness in, in terms of having just feeling better and stronger and having a better quality of life, right? So we want protein because protein gives us what we need and, um, and it, it just makes sure that uh, we have enough of the building blocks necessary to keep functioning. Um, so what types of protein do I like? I like protein that generally comes from animal sources. The reason I like protein that comes from animal sources is because it tends to be higher in uh, the particular amino acid known as leucine. So leucine is the dominant amino acid that is necessary for sending the signal for our bodies to synthesize muscle tissue. And in order for us to uh, get that signal and build muscle tissue after each meal, we need to overcome a certain threshold of leucine. And so when you eat things like dairy and beef and chicken breast and lean pork um, and fish, you're going to get a higher percentage of leucine in relation to the calories you consume in relation to the total grams of protein you consume and that will allow you to get the best bang for your buck allow you to to eat overall less protein and less calories while still getting the right ratio of amino acids so that we can build and maintain our lean body mass so can you find leucine in plant-based proteins? The answer is yes. The problem is that the highest concentrations of leucine in plant-based proteins tend to come from things like either seeds and nuts or uh, le legumes. And I have issues with that because I, uh, if I am eating lots of peanuts or uh, peanut butter or sunflower seeds, or walnuts in order to get my adequate amount of leucine. First of all, I, I'm still probably eating way more fat. The, the, the fat to protein ratio is way worse in those compared to uh, a, a piece of sirloin or a piece of chicken breast. And then secondly, most of those fats are uh, omega-6 linoleic acid which in my opinion, um, we, we, our bodies don't do well with um, in high concentrations. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that they are highly oxidative. They cause mito mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, they're, they can be obesogenic. 
So not a huge fan of over consuming high amounts of seed oils in order to get enough leucine in my diet. And then even with the lower fat options like uh, beans and legumes and things like that, I'm still worried about, uh, you know, phytic acid, which can uh, impede mineral absorption. I'm concerned about oxalates, which can be disruptive to the gut. And I'm worried about um, uh, uh, resistant starches because resistant starches, um, in my opinion, have kind of been put on a pedestal erroneously. Uh, there's been a recent fad, I call it a fad, where people rave about resistant starches and fibers and the microbiome and how that's great for you. And... Um, but there's actually a lot of uh, contrary evidence to show that uh, if you eat certain types of resistant starches, you can have a higher turnover rate of certain types of bacteria that um, the waste products that are left behind uh, build up. And those waste products are known as endotoxin. Um, this is something that uh, you could learn more about by listening to uh, Ray P or uh, Georgie Dinkov, um, much more articulate than I am about how this all works. But basically, you build up these waste products, which is a, a waste product of the bacteria. And then that causes inflammatory responses and spikes cortisol levels. And the problem with cortisol is that it tends to catabolize muscle tissue. And it tends to um, uh, cause you to retain body fat and probably causes... Um, all sorts of other metabolic problems when it's drawn out over a long period of time. So I don't want to eat a lot of seed oils. I don't want to eat things that are disruptive to my gut or spike my cortisol levels. So I'm not very interested in getting my proteins needs met through plant-based sources. Um, if I wake up in the morning and I have Greek yogurt, um, there's probably a host of other nutrients that are much more bioavailable in there. Um, if I have a piece of beef, it's the same thing. And I know that I'm getting a high quality, high bioavailability of uh, protein so that I can meet my needs without getting all that other junk that I don't want uh, into my system. Okay. So, um, and then when you accomplish this, especially if you're combining it with some sort of resistance training, you're going to be able to build muscle mass, maintain more muscle mass, have a higher metabolic rate, feel better all the way around. Um, and, and so that's my main goal is I want my resting metabolism to be as, as high as possible. Um, also, protein satiates us. So if we fill up on protein, we tend to be eating less of the other stuff. And um, there's a thermogenic effect to eating protein. So you actually have to burn calories in order to digest protein. So uh, those are all benefits of focusing on protein, protein, centering your meals around protein. And those are my reasons why I prefer to get my protein from animal sources as opposed to plant sources. So uh, thanks for joining me, guys. And um, I'll catch you next time.